Okay. <laughs> I'm going to give the uh, struggle a little bit. You know, you know. Oh, no, no, look, I've got. It's fine. All right, guys, before we start, uh, a quick reminder you can post your question QA on the app, and then we'll read it from here. Or you can ask me for the mic, then I'll, I'll bring the mic to you. Yep, that's it. You guys can start. Great. Okay, well, uh, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, and uh, this is a, a little talk that we've put together, um, not so much in the idea of uh, backslapping. It's more like the idea of saying we're, we're setting a base camp. Um, we're saying there's a great big mountain in front of us. There's something we want to actually achieve together there's some there's a there's a there's a summit that we want to climb towards so it's not about um saying this is all done work this is about actually the beginning of the work let's let's put it that way um so i'd like to give a little bit of a background uh, about myself and then jerome and antonella are going to do the same uh, i've been working uh, in drupal and the kind of open source scene since around 2010 so that's like quite a long time now um, my first experience of Drupal was actually going down to an open source conference. I live in Germany and I, was, uh, I went to an open source conference in Bonn. Uh, I sat down next to a spiky head guy who turned to me and said, hey, who are you? And I said, uh, Andrew. And he said, yeah, I'm Dries. So, you know, it was a good way of getting to know Drupal. First person I ever met was, was Dries himself. And yeah, I used to work for Acquia for a few years. Um, actually, just before Nestle started working with Acquia, they managed to avoid me at that point but they couldn't avoid me later. Um, and I'd like to now pass on to Jerome. Yeah, oh sorry, I look after, I look after um, Platform SH's relationship with Nestle globally. That's kind of my role. So, Jerome. Hello. Yes, I'm Jerome. Uh, I also work for Platform SH and I do strategy works, which means a lot of you know, different things from environmental impact to yeah, uh, a lot of other stuff. I'm a, actually a life science engineer at art. And my most profound relation with in Drupal was that I don't like PHP and I've been doing <laughs> Golang most of the time. But uh, what I liked about it was actually trying to reduce it most of the time, like uh, reduce the number of servers that I used for that. And uh, I've been doing that in many occasions. Like uh, that's that has been my hobby for a long time. <laughs> Antonella, Hi, please. I'm Antonella Severo. Um, I'm the product manager of WebCMS, which is part of the MarTech group at Nestle Global IT Hub in Barcelona. And uh, we, we take care of a suite of solutions that power Nestle's brand websites. So it includes Drupal as a CMS, our past platforms, uh, governance models, processes, and lately DevOps. Um, and so before that, I was actually on the agency side. I worked at Third and Grove, you know, which ma mainly is a Drupal agency. And I've also been around a, a bunch of years. I mean, I was here before web <laughs> websites. I built my first websites in HTML. Um, and also, like, just to show you how <laughs> long I've been around, I um, was an early adopter of LinkedIn, so I ac actually was able to get LinkedIn uh, slash Antonella, <laughs> believe it or not, so first name. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, yeah, let me tell you a little bit about Nestle, um, just to give you a bit of context. In 2015, there were about 2,100 brand websites. And of course, they, it was completely decentralized. Hundreds of CMSs, uh, many different hosting platforms, many uh, individual local agencies not connected. And, um, you know, if, as you can imagine, this is inefficient. 
the total cost of ownership is very high, and we just couldn't uh, manage the security risk. So we went, uh, we undertook a journey as all uh, solutions in IT, and we went through a digital transformation. So what were our goals? So the first thing we wanted to improve digital experiences for our users. We wanted to provide the businesses and markets freedom in a box. So instead of building all our products, we were going to adopt, adapt, assemble as much as we could. And we also wanted to make sure that the, mar uh, the businesses and markets could use their marketing budget more for the custom features that are relevant for them. Um, and we would take care as much of the um, technology as possible, uh, you know, like 80% or more. So, to, so how, you know, how did we work towards achieving this? So one of the things we did is follow the IT strategy, which is to simplify, standardize, and share. And we, you know, and we relied on best-in-class solutions. And we consolidated the, the consolidated the tools and processes. We masterized as much as possible, and we we even decommissioned sites that didn't have as much value. And the results today is we have 1,300 brand websites, 1,200 are in Drupal. And to understand the scale, that's like 300 million page views per month globally. So just to give you an idea of our scalable, how we scaled up, what our model is, we um, are undergoing like the master approach, which maybe is like 60% of our sites, and there's about 30 masters. Um, so it's a unified code base, and then we have templates, and we can have many templates against each master, and then we have child sites, e like each master could have like 60, 70 child sites. Um, so, yeah, and on top, of, and we built that on Drupal Core, but that wasn't enough. We also built a Drupal distribution, which is called Lightness, um, to even, um, you know, kind of standardize and share more. And then, uh, you know, united with our past platforms. And then on the next level up is web application, which the business owns uh, with their technical agencies. And, you know, so I will pass it on to you. <laughs> Great. Okay, yeah, so um, thanks Antonella. Um, so that's a bit more about uh, the way that Nestle is doing things. Um, Platform SH, hopefully there are people in this room that have used Platform SH who are familiar with Platform SH. Can anyone? Okay, so maybe it's just short of half of people actually using it or maybe familiar. Hopefully um, you know that Platform SH has been around the, uh, the Drupal space for a while. We actually come out of that sort of background, you know, uh, Drupal Commerce was something that was built by the same people as built Platform SH. Our CTO was the guy who had the most commits on that beautiful old beast, Drupal 7. So, uh, you know, like we're, we're kind of Drupal through and through from where we began. Um, and this little video or this little uh, image gives you an idea of the, um, you know, like the, the concept behind Platform SH. Uh, you as a developer simply insert your code and Platform SH does the rest. So. Um, the idea is that you can then actually have the whole um, way in which you uh, develop your project is, you know, essentially completely uh, code-driven uh, from infrastructure as code. So you actually define the servers, the services, um, all of that kind of stuff is then done simply through Git. Uh, you manage all of your data. You've got your scaling, your operations, uh, compliance, access control. All of that is run via Platform SH. So. We like to think that that means that we also fit well with companies like Nestle doing large-scale Drupal, doing large-scale operations where you need to manage lots of stuff um, at once. And that's kind of like the sweet spot for Platform SH, that kind of um, fleet management where you've got hundreds of projects where you need to manage those efficiently, which kind of fits nicely with what, uh, what the, uh, the, Drup uh, the Drupal people at uh, Nestle are also doing. And then the next thing that we're going to talk about is how Drupal actually got us together. Right, so I think in 2017 at DrupalCon Vienna, not far from here, um, some members of my team went to DrupalCon and of course met you know, the Platform SH team. And subsequently, when we started to do an RFP to expand our panel of uh, past suppliers, um, we invited them to attend and you know, they, they were chosen as one of the three. And yeah, that's <laughs> that's how you know Drupal, the Drupal community really helps you know to share and uh, make connections. Exactly. So, oh, did yeah. you want to talk a bit more about Drupal as 
you know, the history of how, yeah. how that side of things? Yes. So, yeah, uh, as we talked a little bit earlier, but Drupal is actually important. There are large deployments of, uh, of uh, Drupal. And uh, for us, we host a lot of the, of the, of the website, but it's said to represent like 2% of the internet. It's a, it's a huge thing. So for us, we, there are millions of users, mi millions of uh, projects are actually running. I don't know if we want to say anything more about this. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay, next um, next slide then, yeah. Okay. So, you know, fast forward to last year when our product group manager reached out to our vendors to find out what they were doing in digital sustainability. S and why did we do this? Because Nestle was on a path, um, we're working hard to reduce the carbon footprint across the whole company, you know, according to the Paris Agreements to achieve net zero emissions by 2050, you know, at, at a minimum. And so there's a lot of actions underway throughout the whole company. And so in our department, uh, well our area of IT, we started to look at what we could do with brand websites. Um, so we started on this journey. So we learned that Platform SH was already actively investigating um, in, you know, it, it, uh, the impacts and possible ways to reduce this. And also there were other efforts going on at Nestle. So there was an innovation challenge on sustainability and another team uh, one the, the with their project, which is uh, to um, look at brand websites. They're, they're associated with us. So of course they contacted us to work with them when they won. And we also did a roadmap <coughs> study for our Drupal distribution. And one of the features recommended was sustainability. I, I don't think we knew what, but we knew that it was there. So, um, so we started to have discussions with all of these different groups, and at some point we're like, okay, let's let's get everybody together and see, you know, just start a discovery and share wha where we are and what we're doing. And as a result, we created this kind of green action committee. And so that's that's how we started on this road together. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, one thing we we started from this um, the thing is that we perform our first carbon audit last year on the 2020 um, uh, data. That is something that is important because that's the, that's the start of uh, trying to measure things. Um, a carbon audit is just basically buying, paying someone to look into your data and give you numbers about what you are actually emitting and for us it's about what the company does, what the infrastructure we run for our customer does and what the, the transit, the network aspect for instance, um, impacts are. So yes, measure all the thing. Why is there uh, an interrogation mark there? Is that because we are a pass provider, uh, we could just ask you know, Google, Amazon, and Asia, and OVH, and all the, the, the one we, we, we are working with, what is our current you know, carbon emission? Just uh, use their word and they just believe what they say. But you may know that they all claim to be carbon neutral. And what our carbon auditor says <laughs> usually is that, okay, carbon neutrality is just actually buying carbon credit or actually buying renewable energy and sending it back to the grid so that it compensates, you know, it offsets the, the emissions. But the, um, the infrastructure are always growing, so they are always emitting. Uh, taking into consideration the fact that they are buying or selling renewable energy uh, is called market-based uh, accounting. And um, the most important regulations that are being passed are insisting on using the location-based approach, so what is actually the data centers, the green data centers are actually plugged in the same plug, electricity plug, than every other system. So in France, for instance, there is no greener data center in terms of energy, one to another. Some of them are a bit more efficient, but that has to be measured. So this is an important thing. So if we advance to that, measuring is something we recommend for everyone, and that's something we've done, and that we've been trying to share. And the way we measure things is about you know, taking actually the, the resources we use, and try to see what the, the electricity consumption can be, so some, some provider can report this. And then getting the carbon emissions from that is just applying the carbon intensity that is local to the country we use. So carbon intensity is the amount of carbon produced by a kilowatt or megawatt hour of electricity. So in France it's pretty low because we have nuclear energy, it's not really carbon emitting, but yeah, it's nuclear. In Sweden, it might be uh, hydro, or in some other place might be wind farms, so di different uh, aspects. So it can vary from one to 20, say, 15 in France and maybe a thousand in, in Australia. 
Uh, so it, it varies a lot in the world, and we'll get back to it. Measuring is actually uh, something important to do to just have a, a different appreciation. If you compare, for instance, Google and Amazon, they are very different uh, numbers for the same infrastructure. So that's, that's important. And uh, going from there, I think carbon is interesting, but um, uh, for, for Nestle, for instance, getting to know what project might be more impacting or what uh, system could be requires us to, to go a bit higher and to, uh, to get into the metrics. Um, how much CPU is used by this, this project? How much RAM, how much storage, network, and what is m the most contributing? Can we improve on things? And how can we model uh, this information to eventually break down our general carbon audit per customer. So this is something that we'll be doing this year for all of our, our customers on the data from 2021. And uh, this is an ongoing process because the more we do it, the more we learn, the more we identify where the, um, the, the fine details are, <laughs> where the fine prints from our providers are written to. So let's get to the rest. Yeah. So speaking about how we measure things, um, with the initiative project that we're doing, um, we decided to you know, start small and do actions that we can achieve. So we have three different goals. The first one is to set the, ba the baseline. We want to measure um, where we are now. And you know, we want to find out what is the carbon footprint of each site. So of course, we were like, OK, let's just get a whatever calculator that's on the web and you know, throw a badge up on the site. You know, of course, that's you know, but when we dug deeper, we know, like, yeah, but what are those calculators really measuring? Uh, we need to understand better and find the right calculator, you know, then they helped us to understand that. Um, you know, so we need to figure out what's a meaning, what are the meaningful indicators, because um, we don't want to greenwash it. We want to really understand what's happening and, and display it. So the second one is to bring awareness. Uh, so to visualize the data, we're going to create dashboards. And uh, and yeah and and to show you know to kind of start um, having our markets and our you know vendors understanding that and helping us in that area, and the third is to encourage change and track the process, the progress. So we're going to provide best practices and we're going to um, you know do the tweaks uh, you know along this road and keep you know finding out new ways to um, uh, improve the system. And then, so one of the things that we also discovered is, is we also have to optimize our application level. Um, so to make the application resources more efficient, as Jerome had just mentioned, we don't want to throw metal at it. We need to understand what's going on. We don't want to just upsize a container when you know it's um, getting higher. Uh, we need to dig in a little bit and um, kind of, uh, you know, uh <laughs> um, Make sure that we're just we're <laughs> I'm kind of <Yeah>. lost. <laughs> um, Analyze what yes, what's exactly. actually happening yeah. inside exactly. of that particular yeah. application, how that's actually um, mm -hmm. uh, putting resource uh, exactly. strain on the particular that, resources yeah. and so on. Yeah. Um, so we we so we're going to provide best practices for our websites, but we also have to look at lightness, which is the distribution, because that's the basis of many sites. Um, and we wonder, understand, uh, you know, how to make it more performant. Um, and actually, you know, we're going to be doing some research projects with them to kind of understand mm -hmm. that. And um, yeah, and the results results are still to come on that. Yeah. So. Great. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, so the application performance, as we said, we are measuring things. Uh, the general model of the impact, the carbon emission impact, is just trying to get the most efficient applications, the resource efficient, like it, it shouldn't require a lot, to deploy it as densely as possible, and that's what we are going to discuss, and try to densely, as in using fewer resources, but use those fewer resources more. And Maybe once we have this very efficient system, try to locate it where it's actually emitting the less carbon on the best data center in the most. Move to the location. side, Jerome. Yes. Yeah, there's only one, one picture. But it's an interesting one. That's what we do at Platform. We pack application very tightly, very densely, so that we add the carbon in it as third party independent. Try to look into it and try to get information from the market to tell us, okay, how dense are we when we deploy all this application, those Drupal applications that usually are deployed on dedicated resources. And as you may know, servers, they usually idle because we over project vision a lot as a community. I mean, that was the a machine is cheaper than, a, uh, th than the workforce. So 
by hour. It's, it's, it's easier to throw metal at problem. And so if you have problem, you just push on a server or you upsize it and then you forget it and you don't pay engineers or persons to, to work on it and optimize them because sometimes it's, it's easier. So yeah, most of the time, a lot of servers are too big and they are just wasting energy. They're wasting energy because uh, yes, they had to be produced at some point and uh, you know that supply chain and everything, uh, it's not without impact and moreover the, a server is actually consumes a lot of energy just doing nothing. The idle, the, the, the consumption per operation, uh, it's, it's not neg neglectable and uh, the more we use a, um, a processor, the more we use the CPU which is the most energy consuming um, part of the, the server that we use. We don't do use GPU or things. Storage is actually kind of cheap. So the more we pack application together, the most efficient it is. So using fewer resources, but more like loading them at 80% say. So we are, in general, our auditor says like 12 times better than the most naive deployment on AWS, for instance. There are the others are not really sharing, <laughs> and unfortunately, other providers of container as service, for instance, it's very unclear of the serverless function from GCP or AWS. We don't have real numbers about their density, so their over commit level, for instance, it's uh, difficult. Our global mantra is about right sizing when we do dedicated deployments, so make it as small as possible and allow it to grow when, when needed. And in our um, container uh, approach, then, try to pack it, and this, this, this allows uh, for great, uh, great gains in general. So density, current size, can move on. Then, yes, once we have this very, uh, very efficient system, let's say we have used observability, optimized everything, um, the Drupal that we have is the most cacheable, the, um, it's, it, it's great, it's densely uh, deployed with all of the, this application from different persons. Uh, now we need to deploy it somewhere. Um, maybe we could add one sooner. So we are, we'll, we'll try to deploy it where it's greener. What does it mean greener? As we said, carbon intensity is a thing that varies a lot and it's a function of the, the energy grid. So the energy grid is the, in France, for instance, it's a, it's a mix of mostly nuclear energy and then wind, I think, is the second uh, energy we use. But it's very different, for instance, in Canada. So you see here wh where it's green, it's <laughs> actually greener. It's uh, the lowest carbon intensity possible. So the lowest, I th actually I think it's, uh, it's in Quebec. It's uh, maybe below 50, something like that. Oh, 50 grams per megawatt hour or something. Okay. So um, this, is a very this is very different. It can vary a lot and depending on the, the, the location of your customer users, you may want to be able to locate your application where it means uh, it could have the, the lesser impact. For most our customers, in, in, in for instance, for the Drupal project we host, we often rely on a CDN to handle on most of the static asset kind of network impact. So locating the, um, a website in, in Germany or France won't have a big impact on the performance of the website considering everything, but then why, why should you deploy in Germany? maybe for data locality, maybe for compliance, maybe for security reason, maybe because you have a good partnership with a local hoster, but uh, it's difficult to make a case for, uh, from an environmental impact standpoint, for if, if there is a 5 to 10x uh, ratio in carbon intensity. So we are considering locating our project, our region, public region, uh, where the intensity is actually lower. There are no solution for every place on Earth, for instance, in East, uh, uh, Southeast Asia, it's difficult. There is nothing quite good. Uh, currently, the Australia has a very ambitious program, but you can see that it's probably one of the worst places on Earth to host a, <laughs> a data center, to place a data center. And uh, in the US, it's not much better, but we have Canada. for Australia. It's always the answer in uh, yeah. North America. Okay, so great. Well Thanks, Jerome. Um, I'm going to speed it up a little bit because uh, we don't have too much time, but I think to take a step back, what we talked about basically is um, three different areas where we can improve things. And those are the areas we're working on, not just with Nestle, but in general. But specifically, we're trying to look at app efficiency. How do we make Drupal, for example, work better in the cloud? Uh, secondly, the density and right sizing. How can we 
make sure that we're packing as many projects into the most efficient regions. And then thirdly, those greener regions. So what we've got there is it's like a, you know, it's a Venn diagram where we have that overlap is where we can actually get to um, much higher levels of improvement in terms of what uh, a particular project can actually do in terms of uh, its um, carbon footprint. So as you can see, it's not quite exponential maybe, but the more that overlap happens, we're going to move from a good improvement to a better improvement to a best improvement where all three of those come together. And I think that's the exciting bit is where, you know, we can say, well, you know, we've got um, things that um, our customers can do together with us as partners. Um, we've got stuff that we as Platform SH can do in terms of the density, in terms of the right sizing. And then we can also look at finding the best places to move these projects. And, you know, in the most humble way possible, not us standing there waving a finger, but trying to educate ourselves. That's really about what we want to do here, you know. As I said, it's about having a base camp, not about having a back slap, you know. So what we're trying to do is find a way to learn together, to advance together, uh, and, you know, to, to grow in terms of what we're doing here. And I think that sort of, like, comes to be, like, I think the, the final message. That's what we're really here for. And I'd like to hand over to Antonena for um, a conclusion there on that point. Right. I mean... Maybe I'm not the most technical you know, person on this, but um, I'm learning a lot through this journey. And it's actually getting very exciting to see the impacts that we could have, especially at Nestle where we have 1,200 websites. Um, you know, on our team, you know, we, we're beginning to understand you can't just look up something in Google and find a proven methodology because it, it doesn't really exist yet. And, you know, we can only challenge our preconceptions and fears and probe, you know, ask questions to probe deeper. Um, so, you know, again, uh, the goal of this session was not to give you results. Uh, it's just to um, invite you early on, you know, give you a glimpse early on in our journey. And, you know, um, I'm kind of curious um, how many have been thinking about sustainability in their projects with a show of hands. Okay, great, great. So I'm glad you attended this session and, you know, uh, joined us um, so we could share, uh, you know, what these small steps are that we're taking, the conversations we're having. Um, and you know, perhaps we could jumpstart the sustainability session you know, here at DrupalCon. I mean, what can we do in that sense? Um, how can we make Drupal as a whole more efficient? Um, we know that the Drupal Association website is committed to it, but you know, so that's a small step, which is great, but what about all of Drupal sites? Um, you know, how can our community contribute? Uh, what standards will we use going forward? Should we do a working group? Um, you know, what are the next steps? So feel free to contact any of us, you know, with any questions. Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And any questions? I think we got some maybe. Yeah. There was a Q&A. Yeah. yeah. We have one from the app. Let me read it to you guys. Lucas. I think it's Lukash. Which hosting platforms does Nestle use? Uh, how does Nestle choose the right one for the project? Um, we have three hosting providers, Akia, Pantheon, and Platform SH. So it really depends on the type of project that we're talking about, but we give the options to our markets and our businesses and brands, and they are free to choose in the end which one they want to be working with. Right now we're focusing for masters with Akia and Pantheon, and single sites with Pantheon and Platform SH, but this is going to be changing soon, and we want uh, to work with our three providers for our all kind of sites. I hope that. Mm. Perfect. Anyone else got questions? Yes, I'm running to you. So just I want to understand, uh, if you don't uh, share results with us, it's still in progress or do you have already the impact? And did you already uh, choose at least the tools uh, that you will use for the measurement or not yet? Um, so, uh, regarding results, I'm into, into the microphone. Um, I so, regarding the result, the, the communication of the results, uh, I will let Nasli answer about the communication, communicating these numbers. But we are sharing every month about between between us and these numbers. And uh, regarding the tools, now uh, we have you know many tools already in place because we are collecting 
every day, like we have you know, data lakes or we are collecting all the metrics for the usage of the system, the application, the servers. So we are collecting it and we've been collecting it for a long time. What we were, what we are not was a model to compute and to have actually electricity consumption from the resource usage. So now that we have this in place in, your, um, in our systems, and we are um, checking these numbers with a carbon auditor, third party that comes and check if our model works fine. So we started this work last year with the, the first carbon audit. We did some POCs uh, for first version of that. There, are, there were problems we've been learning, we've been uh, using different models for network computation, all this term, uh, this is uh, progressing. So now we are about to, uh, to finish our second carbon audit for 2021 and to be uh, breakdown to, to to make a breakdown of this number for platform message as a, as a role for all our customer per project so that will be the deliverable for the q4 I can't really tell when it's going to be so in terms of tools it's just things that we already have observability tools mostly that's it is it okay yep Thanks for the session. It was very, very interesting. I just have a question on, uh, so we you spoke a lot about uh, measuring the emissions uh, from the hosting, from the, you know, the network operations, but uh, are you already or do you have plans of considering uh, the resource operational uh, emissions, like say people working on these applications, the emissions that gets generated, let's say in the logistics part of, um, you know, part of this uh, chain? Um, or you know any related gen, uh, related logistics of these data centers, transport, etc. Um, actually, to be frank, no, because uh, there are many things that we we'll like to con to con to, mm, to con